Hey there, I'm Matt with another The Good, The Bad and The Fergly, in which I bring you three stories making news in Vietnam. One good, one bad and one Fergly. Now Fergly is a play on the words fur, Vietnam's national dish, I guess, and f***ing and ugly. Now I don't need to explain those two, do I? Okay, I think that just about covers it. Ah. There was one more thing. See that subscribe button down there somewhere? Give it a little push for me. Go on, go on. Okay, now we're ready to go. Let's get into it. Well, as usual, we're starting with the good, mostly so that people don't think I'm a miserable wanker who just wants to hate on Vietnam, when apparently I've been known to hate on Cambodia too, in this video. Watch it after this one and leave me a comment. Now, I don't usually dive into the world of politics on my channel for obvious reasons, but mostly because I'm not really a political person. And besides, this channel leans more towards a tongue-in-cheek take on life in Vietnam and Southeast Asia. Although things do get serious from time to time, so keep watching till the end of this video. Having said that, this political story is worth hearing about. Vietnamese President Vo Van Thung has just wrapped up an official visit to Japan where he, his wife and Tokyo Governor Koike Yuriko had lunch at Banh Mi Sinjiao in Tokyo. Hey, who said Aussies were monolingual? <laughs> Banh Mi Sinjiao was established in 2016 by two former Vietnamese students and has grown into a chain of 15 restaurants across Japan. Now, while it's pretty damn cool that the Vietnamese president can find great quality Banh Mi in Tokyo, what makes this segment interesting is why there are so many Banh Mi joints in Japan in the first place. Well, the Vietnamese community in Japan is the second largest foreign community there, with approximately 500,000 Vietnamese now Nationals, Sugoi ne! Yeah, see, I speak a little bit of Nihongo. Boko wa jibun ga daisuki da yo. Back in March 2022, a report stated that there were almost 36,000 Vietnamese uni students in Japan in 2021. Meanwhile, an article from the same year stated that in 2020, there were over 62,000 students in total studying in Japan. A bit different from when I studied there over 20 years ago. I didn't see one Vietnamese what? the whole time I was there. What? Presumably, the rest of the Vietnamese community is made up of migrant labor, entrepreneurs and restaurateurs like these who found success in the land of the rising sun. Of course, Vietnam's relationship with Japan isn't anything new. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you've either been to Vietnam or you're thinking about coming here. And if that's the case, you're likely familiar with Hoi An and its famous Japanese bridge, or Dua Gol, as it's known in Vietnamese, the Pagoda Bridge, because there's actually a small pagoda on it. The bridge was built way back in the 17th century when Japanese trading ships docked at this once bustling and very important port town situated on the central coast of Vietnam. And these days it's a massive drawcard in the UNESCO heritage town. But it's currently under maintenance and shrouded in a shed. Now if the speed of project completion in this country is anything to go by, don't expect to be able to see it until at least 2050. And if you're looking for a little bit of romance to add some spice to this story, then here it is. Apparently a Japanese merchant during a stop off to Hoi An in the early 1600s, one Araki Sotaro from Nagasaki, met and fell in love with Vietnamese princess Nop Hoa, a daughter of one of the Win Dynasty lords who reigned from 1613 to 1635. Anyway, in 1620, things had been going so smashingly well for the loved up couple that Araki san loaded up our princess, presumably with Lord Phuc Win's blessings, and sailed off into the sunset. Or was it sunrise? Anyway, they went to Japan on his ship. Itadashi! Kawaii ne! And so began the long history of Japanese men wooing Ooh. Vietnamese ladies <laughs> off their feet that continues to this very day. Gabarimas! What's more, the love story of the merchant and the princess has been beautifully recreated in the form of manga by Japanese manga artist Higashima, Higashi, Higashima, Higashimura Akiko. I haven't lost it. Yeah. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Japan and Vietnam this year. How cool's that? And it can be downloaded for free from the link in the description below. Now fast forward to a little more recently, to the beginning of the 1900s, at a time when Vietnamese revolutionary Phan Boi Zhou organised what was called the Dom Yu movement. Does that name ring a bell? 
Anyway, he took around 200 young Vietnamese patriots to Japan to study sometime around 1905 in the hope of training up a new generation of revolutionaries to fight against French colonial rule. However, unlike our two lovebirds earlier, things didn't quite work out as well. After the French pressured the Japanese to expel him in 1909, sending him back into the sunset and into the not-so-loving embrace of his imperial masters. A little bit later, Japan briefly took control of Vietnam towards the end of World War II, and then fast forward to the end of the war here in 1975, Vietnam and Japan have enjoyed diplomatic relations ever since. Hureshi. These days, there are heaps of Japanese bars and restaurants in Ho Chi Minh City, and the Vietnamese have taken a huge liking to dishes like sushi, sashimi, and ramen. There's even a Japan town that some of the OGs still about town might better remember as the ghetto, where back in the day, foreigners often wound up living before expat bubbles like Tao Din, a poor man's Changu in Bali, became popular among the White Pants Brigade and those who can't bear to live without bubbles for breakfast. Ouch. Aww. Down the narrow alleyways running off Le Tanton and Tai Van Lung streets in District 1, you'll find cosy ramen yasans and sushi yasans alongside small snack bars and massage joints. A veritable mini home away from home for homesick Japanese salarymen, missing that late night drinking session with colleagues before the last train home out of Shimbashi Station. Otsukara-sama deshita! Even 4Ps, the uber popular pizza chain that was founded in Ho Chi Minh City, had its first outlet here, with the founder being, you guessed it, Nihonjin. And now they've gone full circle with their first branch opening in Japan a couple of weeks ago. Eh, bikurishita, omadetou gozaimasu. The significant economic relationship between the two countries is also evident. In the first nine months of 2023, Vietnam's import-export turnover with Japan reached a staggering $32.9 billion, while Japan's foreign direct investment reached $71.3 billion in September this year, with 5,200 projects. Japan's total FDI in Vietnam so far this year has reached almost $3 billion, up 50% from last year. Nah, no more Japanese exaltations. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. But it's not all one way. Vietnam's largest software engineering company, FPT, has been operating in Japan for close to two decades and employs a majority of Vietnamese workers. There's even a Vietnamese rock band in Japan called Ku Rock that sings in both Vietnamese and Japanese that I've featured on my channel previously. And on top of that, Vietnam remains one of Japan's biggest tourism markets. There's a heap going on between the two countries. I can't help myself. Subarashi! Now, if you're interested in trying some Japanese food while you're here or getting amongst some of the nightlife, make sure you check out the description below for my recommendations. Now, seeing we're on the topic of traveling, Vietnam's tourism industry took a slap in the face recently with an article in VN Express attracting a ton of eyeballs. The article featured comments by international tourists who were asked about their experience traveling here in Vietnam. And here's what some of them said. The government needs to look into the overcharging by taxi drivers, especially at the airport, said one American tourist. It doesn't bode well for the tourism industry when a visitor's first experience in the country is being ripped off. Ow. The disappointed tourist had been shocked when a taxi driver charged him 500,000 dong for a three kilometer taxi ride that would normally cost as much as 10 times less. Sadly, the same tourist copped a double whammy when he was sold a SIM card believing it was valid for 90 days, when in fact it was valid for just 10. Okay, we're talking pretty small amounts of money here and the tourists could have taken more care, like downloading the Grab app and taking a Grab taxi instead of the regular ones, but things like this are just enough to leave a foul taste in one's mouth. <laughs> Oh. and give them a bad impression of the country for life. The amount of trash in the streets and waterways also remains an issue. It's the garbage that lies everywhere on the streets and in squares, said a German tourist who visits Vietnam every year. It's shocking how people in Vietnam treat their environment. Only in Vietnam did we see people sitting in food stalls next to huge piles of rubbish and eating. While the problems with garbage disposal on the southern island of Phu Quoc have been well documented recently, just last week an article exposed a landfill 
landfill on the remote island of Gönsön in the Kondao Islands, approximately 240 kilometers south of Ho Chi Minh City. The Kondao Islands are a stunning group of small islands off mainland Vietnam that attract tourists for its nature. There's apparently good diving off the outer islands and there's a turtle hatching season. And it's also well known for its pilgrimages owing to the tomb of Vo Di Sao along with French colonial and American war prisons and the impressive Hang Yung Memorial Cemetery that pays respect to Vietnam's war veterans and prisoners who were held captive and died in the prisons on the island during darker times. The article goes on to say that as much as 70,000 tonnes of garbage have formed a hill just 7 kilometres outside the town centre, opposite a beach just 100 metres away and remains uncovered. Not all of the trash is from residents and tourists, however. The islands are susceptible to trash washing in from the ocean, particularly as it's close to international shipping lanes and fishing zones. Perhaps it's time for tourists to take greater responsibility as well, instead of wanting the cheapest and best all the time, but instead do better research and support operators who are doing the right thing. Another common complaint from tourists is noise, including karaoke in the evenings when people are trying to sleep. No consideration is given to other neighbours at night, especially by drunk people, says one tourist. Indeed, karaoke ringing out through the streets and alleyways has long been an issue not just for tourists, but for residents as well. Earlier this year in Da Nang, a man was murdered by his neighbour for singing karaoke on a mobile loudspeaker at night while drinking with mates. But if you think that's violent, back in 2020 in Hanoi, a furious resident lobbed 15 Molotov cocktails into his neighbour's house below after being kept awake by a karaoke machine. Allegedly after doing so, the man, age 61, at the time went back inside, locked his doors as if nothing had happened, while homes caught fire below. Amazingly, only minor injuries were reported. It's unclear what song was being sung at the time though, but I have a few in mind that might just cause a similar reaction with my neighbours. Okay, here's the segment of the video you've been waiting for. The Fergly. The segment originating from a play on words fur and ugly or fugly. Now, if you've got this far, then you've done bloody well. Thanks heaps for sticking around because this story's an important one. Not that any of the other stories are less important. It's just that this one is hard to imagine, given the positive outlook everyone generally has about Vietnam and its people, who I, for one, love. What I'm talking about is human trafficking. At the end of November this year, just a couple of weeks ago, it was reported that a 14-year-old girl in Wang Nam province in central Vietnam was sold. Yes, sold. For 38 million Vietnam dong by her employer at a karaoke parlor. It's believed she was beaten regularly and when she was sold, she was taken to nearby Wang Nai province and made to work in a karaoke parlor there. The news here is full of stories like this in a country where human trafficking is quite prevalent and young men, women, boys and girls are sometimes sold into slavery. Just last October, three young men were caught selling two teenage girls to a karaoke parlor in Vinh Phuc province north of Hanoi. The two girls were tricked into traveling from Hanoi to nearby Hai Yung and were then held hostage on arrival until a new buyer was found in Vinh Phuc province. The vulnerable aren't just getting trafficked into prostitution, they're also being trafficked across borders into countries like Myanmar, Laos and Cambodia, where they're forced to work in online scam operations and casinos. And too often, Vietnamese women are either tricked or kidnapped and taken across the border into China to be sold as brides. However, sometimes victims know their traffickers who may be distant relatives, neighbours or so-called friends, making human trafficking extremely complicated to eradicate. But as ugly as this image is, a lot is being done by organisations working with local authorities to combat the problem. Blue Dragon Children's Foundation has been officially operating in Vietnam since 2004 with a mission of ending human trafficking in Vietnam by helping to strengthen families, schools and communities and rescue people from slavery and care for them as they recover while their traffickers are put behind bars. For more information about this amazing organisation, make sure you check out the link in the description of this video. Who knows, maybe there's something you can do to support Blue Dragon and in turn the vulnerable of this amazing 
racing country. Perhaps something like these two guys who set off on foot from Hanoi a week ago on a more than 2,000 kilometre walk to Ho Chi Minh City over the next three months in an attempt to raise over 200,000 US dollars for Blue Dragon and the Tan Lop project that provides education for children in the Mekong Delta, including the construction of classrooms, libraries and homes for people from impoverished backgrounds. If you'd like to support the lads, be sure to follow the link in the description below. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments your thoughts, opinions and observations, and I'll do my best to reply. Until then, take care and stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.